in beautiful places, please. Let's go to prove nobody arrives to church on time. Well, friends, good evening and welcome to our combined churches uh, as Wednesday service. Uh, we welcome you uh, from all various congregations as we join together from Blockhouse Bay, as well as those of you might be joining us via Facebook from wherever in the world you might be, whether you are in our neighborhood or you are far away in a far land of Antarctica, wherever you might be. Uh, welcome along to our fellowship together. It's a season of Lent we begin today and uh, this service uh, we, uh, in our current times due to the what we have situations around us, we're meeting online uh, and so thank you for your participation and thank you for being here and joining with us to fellowship together. Uh, as we come together, take a moment of uh, to settle yourself. Uh, uh, and uh, have a moment of maybe a silent reflection and uh, if you like uh, as we have mentioned earlier that if you like if you have a candle you are welcome to light it as a kind of a symbolic presence of God being present with us um, God who is light of the world uh, Jesus himself who is the light of the world and the fire is a is a symbolic presentation of Holy Spirit. So wherever we are in our bubbles or where you might be outskirts, wherever you are, uh, you're welcome and uh, come into God's presence this evening. <coughs> as we keep a time of silence and as you remember that God is with you in your heart as you pray, in the earth beneath your feet and in the space between you and all those others who breathe with God's breath today. Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the season in the church year known as Lent. Lent is a time to prepare for the celebration of Easter and to renew our life in the mystery of the saving death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We begin this holy season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
we begin our journey to Easter with the sign of ashes, a biblical symbol of mourning and penitence. This ancient sign speaks of the fragility of human life and marks the penitence of the community of faith. So I invite you, therefore, in the name of Christ, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and penitence, by prayer and fasting, by works of love, and by reading and meditating on the Word of God, beginning with this service today. If you have this prayer, we call the our service, which is kind of put into the chat box as well as if you have with you uh, on page two, you can join with me in this prayer uh, to say the bold part, uh, if you would like to, in your bubbles where you are, you can say it out uh, and uh, respond it. Oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. As a mother is gentle with her children, you gather your people to yourself. Through your sweet goodness, our despair turns to hope. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch make sinners whole. In your mercy, heal us. In your love, remake us. Amen. Amen. So just a word of uh, welcome and greeting in, in, in a sense is that my name is Shashi Christian and uh, I represent Church of the Savior and we have Pastor Andrew from the Blockhouse by Community Churches, we have Pastor Rob from uh, Iona Presbyterian Church and we have Pastor Kelly from uh, Baptist Church uh, and we are all here. Uh, uh, this time we do not have uh, anyone representing for us from the St. Dominic Church as they are going through the season of transition and so they had uh, requested and they have put their apologies. So as we come together to worship the Lord, as we all join together as God's people from Blockhouse Bay, let us come in worship and uh, join in uh, this song, Christ, uh, our hope in life and death. And this will be doing by using YouTube clips. So bear with me as I share the screen and you are welcome to sing out, join in, jump in, in your bubbles with these songs wherever you are. But sorry, you will be muted, so we, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, uh, yeah. So bear with me as I share this screen uh, for us. Who stands above the storm he tried? Who 
together this uh, as rents uh, as rents that is our hope our life and death and everything in Christ our hope is in Christ so with that hope we come uh, to pray uh, the prayer is on page 3 as I pray join with me forgiving God you know only too well how often we have failed to live up to a call to be followers of Jesus, your Son. We welcome this season of Lent as a time to make some changes, to renew our commitments to follow the Gospel, and so prepare ourselves for the celebration of Easter. Help us with your presence and grace to make the changes needed in our lives. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Okay. We're going to read from the scripture, as we said, that we will begin reading and meditating on the Word of God through this season. And we begin with today, and we have a reading from Old Testament, from Psalms, and from Epistle, and from Gospel. So first we'll have... Claire, read for us from Old Testament, and uh, Shell is going to read a psalm, and then Rob will read for us uh, Epistle, and uh, Andrew will read for us from Gospel in uh, Gospel of Matthew. So, thank you, friends. This evening, I'm reading from Joel 2, 1 to 2, and verses 12 to 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning. 
rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will, he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest and the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Thank you. Shell is going to read for us from Psalm. Reading from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful from birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are God my Savior. And my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. God, you will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of righteous and burnt offerings offered whole, and the bills will be offered on your altar. Thank you, Rob. Uh, we'll read for us from the Bizzle. Ready? Reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 through to chapter 6, verse 1. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, re be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I, I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. Well, uh, we, uh, as we come to preparing our hearts to hear what God has been speaking to us through the scripture and then as we hear the words of Christ before that we will uh, uh, listen or if you know this song you can uh, join in singing uh, and it's a song of about the ashes so uh, I invite you to reflect on the song as I share this uh, clip with you
Pastor Andrew to read for us from Gospel of Matthew chapter 6. Thanks, Rashid. Listen to these words. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Thank you. And Rob is going to share with us a short message. So welcome, Rob. Thanks, Sashi. And thank you for the opportunity to share this evening. Let's just pray briefly. Well, we thank you for the opportunity to gather uh, via distance, via Zoom, virtually. We thank you for the wonder of technology that enables us to be with one another, even though apart. Lord, may the thoughts of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Amen. The land had been ravaged. Crops were destroyed. Vines were laid waste. Fruit trees of all kinds stripped of bark and thrown to the ground with their branches turned white. The fields were devastated. It looked like an army had marched through the land, destroying everything as it went. In fact, it had been locusts, many eating machines, millions upon millions of them innumerable numbers consuming everything in their path, leaving nothing in their wake. The result was a catastrophe of loss. And into this national tragedy stepped the prophet Joel, calling his people to prayer. In Israel's past, 
there had been a tradition of holding special services of national lament during times of crisis. And in chapter one of Joel's book, he begins his appeal for another such occasion. Yet he begins not by calling the faithful and religious professionals as we might, but by calling the drunks in the street to prayer. His call to prayer is to everyone, both small and great, pious and irreligious. Only once he has called the drunks and no doubt other unlikely recipients does he shift his appeal to the priests, calling upon them to put on sackcloth and lament and pleading for them to sanctify a fast and call a solemn assembly. Joel begs for the religious leaders to lead the way. But it seems as though the religious leaders have lost their way. For his words fall on deaf ears. And so in chapter 2, and the beginning of our reading from Joel tonight, we find Joel renewing his appeal with greater intensity. He turns up the volume, he changes key, blow the trumpet, sound the alarm, let the inhabitants of the land tremble. In ancient times, walled cities had towers in which guards would keep watch for enemy attack. The security of the city depended on their keen eyes, and should they spy a hostile force, it was their duty to sound the alarm. The horn blast was the ancient equivalents of the modern air raid siren. But here in Joel chapter 2, it is God himself who acts as the watchman for his people. And these words of call, blow the trumpet, sound the alarm, are placed on God's lips. God is the one calling the people. But God is not calling for a military response. God is not seeking for the walls to be manned with soldiers. What God desires is for the temple to be filled and for the people to gather and pray and repent. You see, the locusts were not just a natural disaster. Joel sees them as a divine judgment. And the precursor may be to something much more, a day the prophets called the day of the Lord. Of this day, the prophets before Joel had spoken, Isaiah, Zephaniah, and Amos, all these had spoken of a day, a day of darkness and gloom when God would judge Israel and the nations. And as you read Joel, Joel picks up the words of Isaiah and Zephaniah and Amos. And so it's with this day in mind that Joel pleads and petitions his people to pray. But again, it's not just Joel. It is God as well. For again, in verses 12 and 13, we hear God speak. Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Now, at this point, I must confess, I have a question. If God is merciful, 
then I find it intriguing that God would appeal to his people to rend their hearts, to weep and fast. The implication being that if they do so, they'll be forgiven. But could not God in his mercy simply choose to be merciful and refrain from punishing? Does God need to be appeased with fasting and weeping and mourning until he will forgive? Is God beholden to some higher power of justice that even he must submit to? Or is there something more going on? I think there is, because I don't think that God needs to be, I don't think, sorry, that God needs to be placated to be merciful. God, God is merciful. And I don't think God needs to be appeased to forgive. But I am convinced that our actions have consequences. And I do think that the unrepentant sins in our hearts create evil in our world. But I wonder if we need to review or at least revisit our understanding of God's anger especially in the light of the cross of Jesus. I personally like the way Canadian theologian Brad Jersak explains God's anger. That in many cases, God's anger is God's consent or God allowing the consequences of our sins to come back onto us. You see, the Apostle Paul is right. The wages of sin is death. Always. When we harbor sin in our hearts, it brings forth death. And maybe this is God's judgment, God's anger. It's not that God kills, it's simply that death is the natural consequence of sin. This applies both individually and corporately. When we allow sin to fester in our communities, we will eventually reap its harvest. And when global leaders choose to, ignore, choose to ignore the sin of evil tyrants, the world will eventually pay the price. My opening language of a land ravaged was intentional. Because we cannot enter Lent today without remembering the Ukraine and all our brothers and sisters around the world who are being oppressed, who don't make the front pages or the news headlines. We must not presume to begin walking the way of Jesus to the cross, thinking that we can turn our eyes away from the bombing and needless deaths happening right now as we meet. We also cannot watch this unjustified war without remembering that the previous sins of Vladimir Putin went, un, went ignored, minimized, justified by the international community. That sin always leads to death. And so this, I wonder, is why God calls us to repent with weeping and fasting and mourning not only to avoid God's judgment, but because it is only as we humble ourselves and bring ourselves before our creator that we can live up to and live into what it means to be image bearers of God. That it is only as we humble ourselves before God that we become fully human. And to be fully human means to love each other. I came to faith in the Baptist Church, and when I joined the Presbyterian Church about 17 years ago, it was a, a low church variety. Neither the Baptists nor the Presbyterian churches I attended were particularly liturgical. It, was only, it has only been while here in Blockhouse Bay that I've ever participated in an Ash Wednesday service. As the years go by, my appreciation for the more traditional and liturgical aspects of church life has grown. But I am concerned 
as with much of Western civilization, I'm concerned that some of our liturgical practices are still very individualized. Even Ash Wednesday, and even Lent. The focus is often on ourselves, on my spirituality, on my relationship with Jesus. And while I agree that your and my spirituality is important, this is not to be to the exclusion of community. As Jesus teaches in the Sermon on the Mount, being righteous is, a, is about prayer and is about piety. But it's also about mercy and peacemaking and reconciliation and faithfulness and love of neighbor. And as Paul teaches the Corinthians, being ambassadors of Christ is not only about our reconciliation with God, but also with our responsibility to appeal to others that they too might be reconciled. And so, this Ash Wednesday, this Lent, they are to do with more than my and your personal sacrifice and prayer. They are equally to do with evangelism and praying that all the world might repent and be reconciled to God. I offer these words in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you, Rob, for sharing with us those precious thoughts and reminding us of going beyond our, just our individual self, but to incorporating who we are as a community and, and as a people of God. So we come together as this call has come to us, a call of repentance and confession. And uh, Kelly will lead us into a time of confession, and will, which will be followed by the time of intercession and prayer with Pastor Andrew will Lead us to Pastor Kelly first and then uh, Pastor Andrew. Thank you, friends. As Rob has mentioned, it's a time of struggle, time of disaster, time of deaf ears. We come to rend our hearts and to pray confession with hope that God will reconcile us to himself but to one another. So, Father, as we surrender to you, we lay our drooping spirit in your arms. I am stained by sin and my wrongdoing is staring me in my face. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. What I have done has driven a wedge between us. I have sinned against you and my heart aches with guilt and shame. Forgive me for disappointing you. Dip me in the fountain of your forgiveness. Wash away my sin and bring brilliance to my tarnished spirit. Make me over, Lord, with a new heart, an obedient spirit, and a joy-filled life. Sin has brought sadness. Give me the gladness of your spirit. Instruct me with the teachings of your truth so that I may have wisdom in my secret heart. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Show me new ways of living. And when I commune with you, remind me of the path I should follow. Father, I am ready to sing praises of your goodness and your mercy. Part my lips for singing. You alone have accepted me as I am. Thank you for not despising my broken heart. O oh, healer, restorer and strengthener of my soul. I want to live in your will. Restore me and my relationship with you that I may be whole again. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to take a moment to have some prayers of intercession. And I would encourage you to join me. Uh, I will lead us in a short prayer. And then you can take yourself off mute. Uh, encourage one or two to Pray after each um, short prayer that I pray and just join us in, in this time of the session. Just seek the, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He will lead us as we pray together. So let's pray. 
Let us pray for the church throughout the world that all followers of Christ will be salt and light for the sake of the gospel. And that the saving power of Jesus would be made known through the character and selfless love of the church, especially to those who are lonely and forgotten amongst us in this leaping season. I encourage one or two to lead us in a word of prayer. Lord, I just pray for ones who have lost ones over the last year and are hurting at this time. Just pray for your Holy Spirit to surround them, encourage them and support them as they take each day as it comes. Amen. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine and in Russia. Lord, that you would give them strength. Uh, those in Ukraine, Lord, to to serve and to love their brothers and sisters, even while the bombs are falling. And we pray for our brothers and sisters in Russia, Lord, that they would have the courage to stand up to a regime that is opposed to your love. Give them strength, we pray. Father, let us pray for our political leaders. May their efforts to foster global peace and justice be rooted in a change of heart towards God that turns away from self-interest and violence and seeks the good of the poor, the powerless and defenseless of our world. Pray for this world afflicted by war and violence. As Pastor Rob just prayed that our hearts are especially turned towards the Ukraine and Russia at this time, but also throughout the world where there is conflict. Again, I would encourage one or two people to, to pray openly at this time. Lord, I want to pray for the leaders of the world, Lord Jesus, in different countries. Lord, I ask you to give them wisdom, my Father, Lord, and help them um, to recognize you as the leader of this world, Lord Jesus. You are our God. Lord, I pray that the world leaders, Lord, right now, even with the Ukraine problem, like with the war, and there's so much going on, unrest even in New Zealand, Lord. I pray that... Um, um, that you forgive us, Lord, forgive and heal our lands, Lord Jesus, and give wisdom to our leaders, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we also think tonight of those who suffer due to a lack of justice in our world, various ways that that plays out. Maybe the action of this Lent season, the ongoing ministry of the church, reveal a God of justice that brings hope and comfort to those who look to him. Father, I just pray that as a church that we would be a demonstration of the character of Christ in everything that we do. Lord, help us as individuals, as churches, and as combined churches in our community to represent you well. That as people come in contact with us, Lord, they would experience something of the character of Christ working in and through us. Lord, we continue to invite you to, to work, Lord, in and through us for the good of our community, the good of this nation, the good of the world that we're part of. And Father, tonight we pray also for ourselves that we would not grow weary of doing what is right and just in your eyes, that we would remain faithful to our calling to be salt and light and to live justly as God's people. Would you join me, church, as we pray through this wonderful prayer that Jesus taught us to pray? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. As we have heard word of God, 
as we have shared together in a time of prayer and confession, we are invited to live uh, our lives in this season and in these days, during this year and the days which the Lord gives us on this earth by faith and not by sight. And uh, we, we're going to sing this song by faith, uh, which is sung by Keith and Christy Getty. And uh, I'll share with you this uh, YouTube clip and hope uh, you are familiar with the joining and to declare that faith in Christ. Yes. 
sight We walk by faith and love by sight So friends, as we come to kind of conclusion of our service, that's the promise. As we go, whether in the land season, or 2022 or as long as the Lord keeps us on this earth we will walk by faith and not by sight that's the promise that's the challenge for us to continue in our Christian journey in our faith and following Jesus Christ so as we come to conclusion uh, stretch out your hand and uh, reach out to each other as we reach out to each other in uh, this uh, peace and a uh, blessing towards the end of the service. Uh, if you are able to stretch your hand out in connection and solidarity with all those who are living and breathing and praying today, uh, not an easy peace, not an insignificant peace, not a half-hearted peace, but the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us always. Christ gives us grace to grow in holiness to deny yourself and follow him. God, who from the death of sin raised you to new life in Christ, keep you from falling and set you in the presence of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So have a blessed season of Lent and, uh, yeah, continuing journey, faith in Christ. Yeah. Thank you for joining us today and uh, I hope and pray that uh, this is our fellowship. Uh, in this way we will continue and encourage as we see one another across in our neighborhood. Yeah. Ha ha have a blessed evening. Thank you, friends. Thanks, Sashi.